Hey, what's up guys? My name is Cameron Gallagher and today I'm going to be giving you five more reasons why you need to switch from Premiere Pro to DaVinci Resolve. So let's get into it. So pushing a year ago now, I had actually made a video about why I switched from Premiere Pro to DaVinci Resolve, and I gave you five of pretty much the big picture reasons why I switched. Now a lot has changed and I wanted to make an updated video telling you five more reasons why I switched from Premiere Pro to DaVinci Resolve and why you should really contemplate doing the same. Now I'm not saying Premiere Pro is a terrible software by any means, but there are a lot of issues that trouble it, and when you move to DaVinci Resolve, there's a lot more solutions that you then tend to find. So again, I totally recommend looking at DaVinci Resolve. It is free to download. Now some of these things are both in the free and paid version, but again, $300 for the studio version, unlimited upgrades, you really can't beat that. So anyway guys, let's jump into number one and that is the raw workflow. So one of the things that used to really bother me the most in Premiere Pro was the raw workflow, whether it was R3D files, but especially things like Cinema DNG and other types of raw formats. One of the biggest problems that was really weird was that Premiere Pro would automatically import some type of Rec 709 LUT on it. So you'd have to go in and then change those settings later and then get back to your log format if you were shooting in log. And it was just so much you had to do to get past the original raw settings. The great thing about DaVinci Resolve is in the color tab, you can just click on the raw settings and everything is right there. So from white balance to exposure, to tint, to all that kind of stuff, it is all right there. It's very seamless. And the nice thing is too, is it's very easy to change different gammas, things like that. Again, I'm not saying you can't do this in Premiere Pro, but again, it's just a lot simpler and a lot easier to work with in DaVinci Resolve. Now, number two is the eGPU support and multiple GPU support. So one of the biggest issues with Premiere Pro is how unoptimized it is for the rest of the software. Now, of course, one way that you can get better optimization is by having a very powerful PC, in particular, your graphics card. A lot of things like Red Giant Universe products are actually GPU accelerated, but the problem is in Premiere Pro, it can only support one GPU, and generally speaking, does a lot better with NVIDIA CUDA core style GPUs. So if you're someone that has multiple GPUs or you have an AMD GPU, not saying you're completely out of luck, but it's going to be much less than you're actually paying for in your system that you build, or if you bought one. With the studio version of DaVinci Resolve, you can actually support multiple GPUs and eGPUs. So like in my case, I'm actually using my internal MacBook Pro GPU, as well as an external Radeon 580, which has eight gigabytes of graphics power. So cumulatively, I now have 10 gigabytes of graphics power working in DaVinci Resolve Studio. Now, let's say you were someone who has two graphics cards and a custom built PC. Now, let's say you have something like Nvidia too, where it would really be taken advantage of, especially in Premiere Pro. Unfortunately, only one of those can work, but again, in DaVinci Resolve Studio, you can easily select and deselect which ones you want to use. And that's another big thing is that you can select and deselect the GPUs you want to use. Let's say you have a small GPU that's mainly just powering a monitor and you really don't want to tie that up with DaVinci Resolve Studio. You can deselect that GPU and just make sure that the GPU you want to be used for DaVinci Resolve is being used. Now, the next one's kind of weird, but it's actually database projects. Now, if you're coming from Premiere Pro, you're used to saving a project file and that project file being the kind of end all be all of the project. So all of the edits and everything is contained in that file. The problem is, let's say you misplace that file. Let's say you save it in a weird spot or it auto saves somewhere else. You're constantly creating new project files and auto save. So you have a million different project files for one project. Now, let's say you were to go in and edit something in one project file, but you forgot to do it in another project file that you shared to someone. It can easily cause a lot of issues where DaVinci Resolve uses a database workflow. What that means is instead of having a project file, you actually have a project database where all of your projects are stored. Now, some of you might be like, whoa, wait a minute. Well, what happens if that gets deleted or if that's moved? Well, of course, you can always change that project database and put it wherever you want. Your project database could be on an external storage or some type of other SSD, maybe internally. And of course, with a shared project, you can actually have a database on a server or some type of NAS network. So again, it's just an easier way to keep all your projects in one spot and easily move between them, making sure that you have the most updated project always. All right, now into number four is node-based color grading. So if you're unfamiliar with node-based color grading, it may be kind of confusing at first when you look at it. Nodes look kind of scary and they look really confusing, but they're actually way simpler and much more effective than layers in Premiere Pro. So in Premiere Pro, you might open the Lumetri panel and you might go in and you're basically just color grading. The problem is you're color grading basically on one layer, on that clip. Now, of course, you can add Lumetri color panels after that. And of course, a lot of people use things like adjustment layers, but again, it's just you're constantly stacking and stacking things on top of each other. Nothing is subtractive. So one thing that's really cool about nodes is yes, they are similar to layers as though they stack and stack on top of each other, but you can also use really great blending modes inside those in and out of those layers, subtractive, additive,
native layers. So for instance, I can use one node that pulls the skin tone out of my original image, and then another node that pulls the background out of that original image, but it's not changing that original image's color grading, or then it'll only change the things after it. And with layer mixers, you can easily mix these together and do a lot of stuff. Now again, this sounds kind of intense and it is a little bit more advanced, but really once you get the hang of these tools, it's incredible the amount of work that you can do with them. All right, and lastly is LUT support and LUT application. So LUTs are one of the best tools out there. I mean, of course you can buy LUT packs from everywhere, things like LUTify or even personal LUT packs. And one of the biggest issues with Premiere Pro is when you're using a LUT or LUT workflow. So for instance, let's say you have a utility LUT that changes your vlog or something or log profile to a rec 709 color space you have to go in and import that LUT now you can install it but those are just really clunky there's no organization it's just really really bad so then after you install it then you go into the creative tab and you can add a creative LUT but again you then have two LUTs or you're adding more lumetri panels and there's so much confusion and one of the worst things too is you can't actually preview that LUT that well you can see it once it's applied but it's really hard to see prior the LUT based workflow inside of DaVinci Resolve is so much better first off the only only way to apply a LUT is to import it into DaVinci Resolve's LUTs, meaning once you import it, it is then saved in that LUT file in DaVinci Resolve, and the best part is that you can organize them based on folder. So I can organize mine into utility LUTs or LUTify, maybe I have Film Riot LUT packs, I can organize them where it's a lot easier to get to, and the great part is too is that it shows me an immediate preview, I can scrub over and then just click right click and apply. Boom, that LUT is on that node that I needed. It's that simple. I use a lot of LUTs all the time and this is really, really a big and much quicker workflow. Now again, I'm not saying you can't do these things in Premiere Pro, it's just how quickly can you do them, how efficiently can you do them, and how well is it gonna actually work in the end. So anyway guys, that's five more reasons why I switched from Premiere Pro to DaVinci Resolve, and why you should too. Let me know what are some of your favorite DaVinci Resolve features, I'd love to see them in the comments below, and be sure if you're new to this YouTube channel, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and we have a ton of cool videos coming soon, whether it's tutorials on DaVinci Resolve or just filmmaking in general. But anyway guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys later.